Uh, okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of How I Got In. I'm your host, Karina. This week, we're talking about MIT, and we have our guest, Bruno, with us. Welcome, Bruno. Glad to be here. Now, Bruno, tell us a little bit about yourself. What year are you? What's your major? Yeah, so I'm a senior at MIT going into my last year. I major in computer science. I do mostly mobile and web development, I'm mostly on the mobile side of iOS application development. And I focus a lot also on entrepreneurship around MIT's campus. So I've led our sort of uh, entrepreneurship student group on campus, helping students start companies. And I'm currently a VC as the managing partner of Dorm Fund Boston, a uh, student-run VC fund that invests $20,000 in student-run companies in Boston, Philly, San Francisco, and New York. So do a lot of entrepreneurship around here and currently working at a startup that I've been at since October part-time doing web and mobile. Hey, that's cool. Great, you know, developing skills and getting as much experience as you can get, which is truly, you know, while you're in college, you need to be doing that. Yeah. Now we'll talk more about college towards the end of our interview, but let's go into what you did in high school. Looking at your academics, what did your freshman year look like? My freshman year academics, I did, I did uh, TV production. I did TV production. I was an elective. I did, I think it was biology honors. Um, Algebra 2 honors. Uh, I did my first AP class, which was AP Environmental Science, and that was combined with, it was the same teacher that taught biology honors. So I did those classes. And then, yeah, that was math, science, history. Oh, and I was in the gifted English class. And that was my, I think my six classes. Interesting. Now, taking a fresh uh, AP class your freshman year, did you think it was one was too much, too little, or just the right amount? Yeah. So at, at my school, they had a very Boca High, which you went to. They, they had a very AP heavy curriculum. So at the time, uh, it was when they were getting people started on AP classes, and I thought one was the right amount because still wasn't used to the format. I find myself preparing very heavily for the, my first AP test. I must have taken around six. Uh, practice tests. Uh, I, I way over prepared. I like did them very diligently, compared every answer. But I think with environmental science, it, it wasn't one of the more challenging sort of a synthesis type tests. So I thought it was a good sort of first class to take because it was a lot of not a lot of vocabulary. It was sort of a mixture of a lot of memorization and just knowing the concepts. I agree. Now there's no such thing as over preparing. <laughs> That is true. That's Especially true. for AP ah. exams. There's ah. some people who don't even prepare. I've seen yeah. the amount of people that have just said, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just wing it. I've taken the class all year. Well, the same thing applies to regular finals, and you do have to prepare for it, and it is daunting. But AP Environmental Science, I agree, is definitely a great yeah. class to start off with as a freshman. Yeah, great start of class. A lot of friends I knew were also in AP Human Geography, but I liked my electives. I didn't have room for two AP classes freshman year. I took AP Human. It was... Class was tough, but you were well prepared for it. The exam at the end of the year, and the teacher was great. Yeah. <laughs> that paid for it. Okay. Now, going into your sophomore year, did you challenge yourself more? Yeah, so sophomore year, I had now extracurricularly also it was my second year in the theater program. So I did that pretty heavily. I did technical theater, uh, not curricularly, but extracurricularly. I did after school a lot of the theater rentals, a lot of the productions I did as a technician. I um. My second year was my first year in the leadership program, so I started doing the student government class and a lot of the uh, things involved there, planning events, planning sort of functions around the school, spirit week, homecoming, that kind of thing. And I also started doing science Olympiad that year. So I'd, I was on the, the team that went to regionals and then went to states. I, I don't think I was on a state team that year, but so that was a pretty busy extracurricular time there, uh, going into classes. I went sort of, this is when I started taking a lot of AP classes. I did AP Biology, uh, AP World History, AP Psychology, and AP Statistics were the four that I did sophomore year, in addition to the student government class. And then I think that year I was also in another English class. Uh, so that was sort of the, the six there that year. Interesting. I haven't heard of a sophomore taking AP Statistics. That's usually, I mean, most of my friends at least took it their senior year. I'm, but you did start with Algebra 2 your freshman year. So you were ahead of math, essentially, a little bit. Well, 
in some way, a lot of people look at these, this structure, this AP class, based on the way that it's always done, right? And my class was all seniors AP stats. I see a lot of other schools, oh, you don't take an AP class your junior year. I was lucky that my AP stats teacher had been my Algebra 2 teacher, and I asked her about it, say, oh, you teach AP stats, what's that like? She's like, well, it's a hard class, but it has nothing to do with any other math. It's very independent. It doesn't rely on calculus. It doesn't, you know, sort of very algebra heavy. So she was like, you could do it. It's nothing stopping you from taking it. So I sort of dove right in. And at that point, I had a, a plan of most of the classes I wanted to take along the way. I started to see how I could make the most of the AP curriculum at, at Boca High while still doing the classes, the elective classes that I wanted to take. I think by you taking AP stats your sophomore year instead of what the majority of the rest of our school took in our senior years, and it's interesting that it makes, probably made you stand out a bit more, that you were challenging yourself more in every way, essentially, especially yeah. your sophomore year. And, and I was particularly good at math. So for me, it was also something that made me realize, oh, these classes are not impossibly hard. They're not sort of insurmountable in their difficulty. So for me, it was sort of a, an eye-opener, like, oh, like, AP classes are just a little more challenging, but they're not, you know, out of reach to, to do uh, in any given year. So, and I was also, in some ways, lucky. I had a very slacker senior class, so it was good because I sort of had the chance to look really good for my teacher. Hey, if you look good, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, going into your junior year, it is in my opinion and most other opinions, is that it's the most important year in regards to your college applications because it's the one they look at most heavily. And yeah. considering that your applications are turned in the fall semester yeah. of your senior year, they don't really get to look at those grades. Yeah. What were your um, classes like your junior year? So classes junior year, uh, I had AP Physics B, uh, Calculus AB, AP, AP Art History, AP, um, AP Composition and Literature, and AP US History. So that was the, the AP suite. And then I was also in the student government class. That, did you take AP Computer Science throughout high school at all? That was senior year, yeah. All right, all right. Did that help so those, you? I did junior year. But I think the main thing that helped me in getting to college was my extracurriculars. So by that point, I uh, had stopped doing theater. I was still doing Science Olympiad. We had gone to states. I had joined the cross country team and I did that very heavily. I had done a lot of other random extracurricular things. I'd been a cameraman for a local TV station for a year. I was a after-school counselor for one of the local elementary schools. I was on the steering committee of the local YMCA, a student representative, and I was also the secretary for the uh, school advisory council that was composed of the principal, a bunch of teachers, and a bunch of parents. So I think that Really, it made it a lot more difficult year, but like you said, it's the most important year, and it's the one where both your academic and your extracurricular involvements are both at their peak and also are going to be the things that are going to go on your resume, are going to be the things that at the end of your junior year you'll have to be writing essays about and doing and so on. So I was heavily involved both academically and extracurricularly at both high. I like how you describe your junior year as like your peak of high school. And I think it's really important for freshmen to understand to get involved early because as you start as a freshman and a sophomore, you don't necessarily get the leadership, leadership positions within clubs and organizations. But as you get to be a junior and a senior, this is when you start want to start racking up the leader, leadership positions, especially your junior year. That's when colleges see that you're actually in a leader, leadership position, and that truly makes you st stand out from others. Yeah, totally. Because it's a, a lot of people say say that um, you know it's it's being in a leadership position, you have to be an officer. Uh, and I've also actually worked at MIT as a in the admissions office. So I've seen a bunch of applications, but it's it's really both the the passion and the involvement that the schools look for. Because if you come in in a club, you know, in one semester you become an officer, that doesn't look good either for you or the club. If you don't, you know, continue that on. So a lot of what colleges look for is have you been doing this for a while? And also intrinsically, you can't really do very much or be in a very high position without having been in a club for a year, year and a half, two years. So that's where junior year is really where it's sort of spend your freshman, sophomore year trying things out, doing maybe like a low entry level position in some of these clubs and by your junior year is when you have your opportunity to shine and do the things that are going to make the biggest impact on your college application. You couldn't have put it any better. 
going into, or actually in your junior year, also is beginning to take your SAT and your ACT. Yep. Did you start preparing and taking those exams your junior year? So at Boca High, we took the PA for that. So we took that sophomore year, and I believe we might have taken it again junior year. And the PSAT, between the PSAT and the SAT, I think I took that test four, four or five times. I took it, I think I took it four times. My score kept going up. So the, the first time I took the PSAT, I think I got a 1920. Second time I took it, I got a 1980. In the SAT, what people have to realize is that practice does make perfect, because a lot of it is just getting used to the format of the test. What always killed me was the English, and I took it, and I couldn't do any better on my writing. It was my lowest score. I would always get below 700, until I just realized, okay, these are the types of questions they ask. These are the trick questions they always have, and that, especially with the math, it's when you go a little too fast that you make simple mistakes is when they get you. But I slowed down on the math. I was a little more wary on the writing. And then I ended up getting a 2320, which ended up being my best score, including an 800 on the math, which at MIT, it's actually funny. It's something like 50 to 60% of MIT students got an 800 on the math. Oh, no, no big deal. <laughs> It's almost close to perfect or anything. On my ACT, I think I got like a, like a, like a 29 or a 30 on my ACT, which was, in, in on some sections like below 30, like high 20s. It was just funny because one test I did really poorly on, and then the SAT it ended up being more of my test. So a lot of people say, you know, we'll have a test that they do better on. That's what we often realize as well. It's, you know, sometimes you don't do well on both, and you got to focus on one and really sort of get good at it through practice and other whether it be at classes, et cetera. I've heard a lot of that, you know, as I've done these interviews throughout the summer, it's a lot of students have been, you know, some have excelled really well at the SAT, some have done better in the ACT, and some have just done well in both. I was personally better at the ACT than I was the SAT, and I, that's why I think it's yeah. important to take both tests, because if you only take one, you, know, you don't know if you're going to be better at the other one. So it's really to expand your options. Yeah, it, it only helps if you do both. And also, you know, realize that if you don't do well, that uh, there are things like classes and, and practice tests that'll do wonders for doing better on the test. It's, it's like you said, it's the same thing with AP classes. Some people don't study, and some people have to study a lot. It's different for every person. Now, in regards to preparing for these tests, did you do, like, any classes, or you just stick to the books? For the SAT? Yeah. Um, it mostly consisted of doing a few practice questions online. I didn't do very much practicing, so to speak, for the SAT test. That's a blessing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a good test taker in, in that regard. No, that is, that's literally a gift. Because, <laughs> I mean, for me, I would spend hours preparing for it, and there are some people who spend hours doing it, and there are some people who just walk in the first time, and they get the score they want, and never take it again. Yeah. So, They're very lucky. <laughs> I wasn't that lucky, but you know, I'm lucky I didn't have to study as hard as some of the other my other friends that I knew. Now going into your senior year, what was the amount of AP classes that you took? The senior year, I had Physics C, both components, uh, Calc BC, um, AP Literature, Microeconomics, Government, and Computer Science. And so, so six. taking. By taking that computer science class your senior year, did that really help you determine that you wanted to major in computer science in the in later in college? So I, I don't want to say yes because it was a very it was not a very good class. The the, the content was kind of dry and, and boring. I go back this year and I'm like, man, I would have hated computer science if I had judged it by that. But it did sort of pique my interest. I thought, oh, this is cool. I can code things. That's pretty interesting. And I'm not so bad at it. That's reassuring. And and it did sort of guide my interest going into college as something that I should try. But it wasn't like, oh my gosh, uh, programming is the most amazing thing ever. Interesting now. Senior year, you also have your college applications. Yes. And it's no feat taking a special amount of AP classes you took and the difficulty of those classes. Now you have applications on top of it. You've got resumes to create. You have essays to write. You have recommendations to gather. How would you handle all that? Yeah, applications take an immense amount of time. You can never spend too much time on applications. I mean, you it is an investment. You spend a lot of time on your applications to help you get in. And I think with all people, I tell them, write you know, as personalized as possible essays for each college. Try to you know make 
the essay is meaningful, do drafts, send them to other people. I mean, I'll, I'll write drafts of my essays and give them to my English teacher, my other English teacher, um, you know, hey, this is look good, and then come back to it and rewrite it again. Because well, for one, the essay is the only chance you get to talk to the admissions officer, really. And two, it's just you have to sort of, you know, a lot of people don't realize, sometimes you have to step back from your application and say, okay, between this essay question, this essay question, my resume, are they getting a complete picture of me, and is it the picture that I want to show? So for some, especially with interviews, if you're doing a college interview, you know, you might have to do some research on the college, to really see, you know, exactly why you want to go to the college. So you don't just show up and be like, oh, I heard Harvard's a great school. Um, tell me about it, you know. Sp schools like to see students that are motivated to be passionate about things and want to take that passion into their college career. So it's very important how you craft that message in your college application. I liked how you said it. it's a complete picture of yourself. Yeah. It's not, oh, this is my essay, this is one side of me, these are my scores, this is another side of me, these are my grades, this is another side of me. It is, this is me. This is, you know, this is what makes me tick. This is how I study. This is how, what kind of student I am. And it's perfect, the perfect way of saying it. It's a complete image of who you are. Exactly what you said, right? It's also like, this is what makes me tick. Because a lot of people will ask me, hey, what should I write my college essays about? Should I write it about, like, personal struggles? Should I write it about doing a missions trip to Africa? I mean, I had a friend that wrote his about his love for chocolate. I had a, you know, it's, exactly. It's what makes you tick. It's what you're interested in. Colleges want to see interesting people. It's, I, I always rag on this. I'm like, I see it so much, right? Like, every other person knows a missions trip that changed their life. Like, Find something. Yeah. You and 500 other people have done that as well. Yeah, exactly. You're not the only one I got to go to an African village. Find something that actually makes you different than everyone else. Exactly. But in um, previous interviews that I've done, we've had there was one. Um, she wrote about where's Waldo. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's completely yeah. different, and yeah, it is. Um, I think a common thing that students fall into is what does the university want me to be like. And that's not it at all. It's who are you, and how can we learn more about you? Yeah. Exactly. Now, how many universities did you apply to originally? I applied early to. I was a Crestbridge scholar. I applied. Are you familiar with Crestbridge? No, I'm not. Okay, so to those out there also who aren't familiar with Crestbridge, it's sort of a, a program, a scholarship program for low-income students. You get free appli college applications. What they also do is they have this program where uh, you apply to be matched with a school. If you get matched with a school, it's sort of a, a guaranteed admission and also full financial aid. So I applied to Penn through the match program. I applied to, uh, I think that was it. And then I applied to MIT Early Action, which meant I applied, but I wasn't bound to that decision. If, if either way, it was made. Interesting. Now, what made what were you looking for when you're applying to colleges? What were you looking for in a college? What was you know? I want this at the university I want to go to. That's funny. I, I didn't really put any thought into what college I wanted to go to before senior year. I, you know, was in sort of this public school up until that. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to University of Florida. It's all I really know. I don't really know every all of my friends go to University of Florida, um, so I would just be content to go there. And then, so that, that was the, actually the first place I applied to, the only place I applied to. And then, I have no idea how I heard about MIT. I think they might have sent me a postcard or something. And I'm like, oh, well, this sounds, they sent out very silly postcards, like very cool, very creative stuff. I'm like, oh, this sounds like a cool place. And then I uh, ended up applying early action to MIT. So it was more like a, I like engineering. That's why I applied to UF for was engineering. And so I also applied to MIT for was engineering. I, I like math, I like science, I like that kind of stuff. I was not very good at writing, so I figured I'd stick with what I was good at and do engineering, which I, at the time I had no idea what that meant. I thought it was math and science and some combination. Well, you're at the perfect university for anything math or science yeah. in that matter. That is just, that's the place to go. Um, now, you are waiting for your decision, and you finally get that decision. What was that like for you? Oh, gosh. So... It's literally every MIT, every other MIT person you'll talk to will say this. I read it. I'm like, oh, they must have accidentally sent me an acceptance letter. Uh, I, I'm going like, to close it, and I'll read it in five minutes, and then I read it again. I'm like, oh, oh, I did get in. And then I was like, I was ecstatic. I was like, I was like screaming. I was like yelling. I was like, mom, I got into MIT. And the first thing she said was, what's MIT? <laughs> We're from Brazil. 
especially in South Florida. It's not a household name, so I don't have no idea what it meant, but I kind of had to explain to her that MIT was a pretty good school in Boston. Um, and then I applied to MIT, and that's where I got in early action. But I still ended up applying to a bunch of other colleges. So I thought, oh, well, I already got in, but let's see where else I can get in. That's a great way to expand your options. And yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Nice. Now, looking back at high school, mm -hmm. what kind of student could you describe yourself as? Um, I, had, I was, I did well academically, I, you know, sort of my academic excellence, that they call it. It's just like I did really well at a baseline, but I was heavily involved extracurricularly. That was my my, my sort of uh, differential in high school. I, I did a lot of uh, science Olympiad. We went to states, and then we went to nationals. Um, I was in the cross country. I was sort of like the team manager. After I got injured, I, I started a physics tutoring club. I was on the school advisory council. I did leadership for all three years and in various positions, and organizing various things, and had a project when third place at states. Um, you know, but in, in addition to all these other things, that, that was sort of my thing. I like being involved, and I like doing all these different things outside of academics, because that was sort of what drove me more in, in some ways, or what, what excited me. Is there any advice you could give to rising seniors, juniors, or just any high school student in general? Looking back, is there anything that you wish you had done something differently? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't wish I had done anything differently. I'll tell people they need to pick things they're very passionate at and do them, while also you know being conscious of what it entails, right? So if you like, you know, I don't know, maybe you really you have like a some sort of collection of something in your room, right? Like that's exciting, but you know, you're not really having an impact on society. You're not like improving your school. So keep in mind, you know, that whatever you do, you're having an impact. It could be doing research. I know people that do research. I know people that excelled really well at sports and you know that's what they really focused on. It's what drove them doing as great as they could on their team. And you know, just sort of do something you're really passionate about. Cause that, in the end, that's all that matters. That's what colleges look for. And they can tell when you're not genuine about things that you're involved with, and you're just doing it to put it on your resume. So I think just and and also think about, you know, in, especially when you apply to college, what's going to make you different than the next applicant they're considering. You know, in my case, it was I love doing all these extracurriculars, starting new things, and being involved with clubs, and that's exactly what I want to do at MIT. I want to go, you know, be involved with clubs, start new things, and you know, try a little bit of everything and do really well academically. Because that's what, especially top schools like MIT, they'll say, okay, this person does really well academically. That's good. MIT, they'll even say, if you do above a 700 on every test, like that's, it's all about the same at that point. Because everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. But they'll take that academic baseline and then they'll say, okay, now what? Now what makes this person interesting? What makes them different? Like how you say you have the academic baseline, you go, now what? Yeah. And that's something that a lot of high school students need to remember. Now what? There's so much more besides opening your book and studying and getting an A on the test. Yeah. It's about what are you doing to your, in your community? What are you doing to your school? Exactly, yeah. Simple as that. If you're like, oh, I got straight A's. We're like, okay, well, a lot of people get straight A's as a baseline, and then they do a varsity sport, you know, a leadership a position, a job. Exactly. Now, for prospective students interested in applying to MIT and they want to visit the campus, everyone loves food. Where's the one restaurant that they have to go and visit? Oh, man, the one restaurant that they have to go visit. I think around MIT, there's a really cool place. It's called the Friendly Toast. They're very, like, a punk theme. And they have breakfast all day long, and it's really good. And it's, it's like, a very wacky place. So a lot of MIT people go, let's get brunch. That's what they're sort of known for. I like the friendly toast, so I I don't want to be generic because my next biggest choice is going to be Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with Chipotle. You just There's can't. Chipotle on campus. I go there. It's like a hundred feet from my apartment. I go there all the time for dinner. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruno, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. It was great hearing what you had to say. Yeah, glad to be here. Glad to help. And for everyone else, hope you tune into our next episode. <laughs>